Zoo's virtual safari zoo to you. I'm Amanda. I've seen you guys quite a bit recently with uh, different animals between the giraffes, the Chevalsky horses, and the Bactrian camels. We're doing something a little bit different today. As you notice, Carly's out, so I'm going to take over today, and we are back with the giraffes. We're going to do a little bit different stuff. We're going to work on their enrichment today. Um, the person who normally answers your guys' comments as we're going and writing them then there is actually filming me. So, we are going to try to answer as many questions as we can. So bear with us, though. Um, if we don't answer them during the live, we will get back to them. Um, Christina or I will get back to them um, later on so that we make sure to get all your questions. So as I said, we are today with the giraffe. So Christina can pan around and pound around and see them. So we have Dobby, of course, at, up close, who everybody knows and loves. Capele, his mom, who is our 27-year-old female and our oldest one. Where's Heshi? And Heshi is... Um, kind of out of sight right now. So um, we did put up some new enrichment. She's over there. You can sort of see her. <laughs> She'll come over as soon as we get different enrichment up. So for the giraffes, we like to give them different enrichment to be able to use that tongue. So you guys have seen the giraffes use their tongue all over the place and these guys love to use them. So we built some new enrichment um, during this quarantine period. So I'm going to show you guys some of those. Um, including our metal enrichment that we have up top. So Dobby actually really loves to play with us, which includes our keys, our identification card, our belt, stuff like that. So we made him his own um, device that he can play with. So he was playing with that a little bit later. Um, so we'll hang up the first the one. The key toy. <laughs> so this guy is pretty simple. It's just one that's made out of Tupperware, as you can see. So it's easy for us to clean and get out, but it's a little bit harder for them to get food out and they actually have to use their tongues. So Dobby, I'll show you guys, it's pretty cool. We'll just stay out of the way and let him work on that one. Um, but of course he's also obsessed with the camera. <laughs> so again, Dobby's our three-year-old giraffe. We just measured him and weighed him. His current weight is 1,528 pounds. If you guys remember, he was 70, eight pounds, sorry, 73 pounds at birth, five feet tall. Now he is seven, or sorry, 1,528 pounds and 12 feet and seven inches tall. So he's gotten quite a bit bigger. So you guys can see that crazy prehensile tongue reaching in there and grabbing all that yummy brows or greens and grain out of there. So I'm gonna head over, I'm gonna grab another one, let you guys watch him do this one, and then we'll get the funnest name one, is called the Bamboozle, and we've been using different size ones for a while, but I'll put another one up and Capele will probably come use that one, if not Heshi will for sure. Amanda, do you wanna explain why you named him Dobby? because we're all Harry Potter fans. So when Dobby was born, he was very small. And our kind of saying was that he's small but mighty. Um, so knowing that mom was sick and that he was gonna be small, we had to come up with a little guy name who's really tough because we wanted him to be tough as well. Um, so we did go with Dobby and it definitely fits him very well. Aw, Ariella, Lala says that she loves Dobby. Thanks for visiting us. We love that. He's pretty awesome. He's, a, he's quite the character. He likes to play with all of our enrichment and keep us entertained. So again, this is Dobby's mom, Capele. She's our oldest giraffe at 27. We'll see if she gets going here. Lettuce is one of her favorites, so I'm hoping she'll start eating that one. Oh, what sounds do giraffes make? Typically, they don't make a sound. They can moo and they can um, chuff and grumble, um, but for the most part, they don't make a ton of sounds. They have a frequency that we cannot hear, so when they communicate with each other, it's really, really um, out of our range. Um, sometimes you can actually hear them humming too at night in Africa. They've actually caught on um, some audio of them laying down and humming to each other. Um, they don't really know why, but that's a pretty cool thing. So here at Denver Zoo, we don't actually hear them vocalize that often. 
Um, if anything, it would be a mom to her calf if she sees danger, as in sometimes service dogs gets her a little worried. <laughs> so if Dobby was laying up front, she would chop at him to get his attention even faster, and he would spring up and run back to her. Abby wants to know what their lifespan is. Good question. So their lifespan is about 25 to 30. So as I said, Capele here is 27 years old. Capele's mom lived to 32 years old. So we're hoping she can uh, make it that far. As of right now, she is doing pretty well. She does have some medical issues that we are always watching for and the vets are always aware of, um, but very little medication. So she's on some meloxicam, which is an arthritis medication and some famotidine, which is just a tummy tummy medicine to make her happy. Um, a few years ago when Dobby was inside, when she was pregnant, she did get really sick and we ended up having to do a full workup on her, a full procedure to see why she was sick and she came up calcium deficient. Uh, ever since then, she has been getting 120 Tums, so actual Tums that you and I would eat a day. Um, and then she gets some high fat grain just because she is a little lady and we wanna make sure she gets plenty of calories. Um, yeah, so overall, even though she gets a lot of care, she is doing really, really well. Emma Ain, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, wants to know how many spots they have. <laughs> Too many to count. So I've never actually tried, but they do have a lot of unique spots. So one of the ways we do tell them apart is by their spots. So the three giraffes we have are very different colored. So Dobby has kind of a brown face and dark face, but his mom almost has kind of a black face. You can see her um, lobster spot. And you can see her lobster on the side. And then when we go over to Heshi, you can see her spot too. So halfway down her neck, there's this perfect little lobster spot. And that's one of the ways we have people who don't, can't tell the colors and their behaviors. That's the way we would say that's Capele. And then here, Heshi is the lightest and she has a very blonde face. And then we call that spot on the base of her shoulder, the bat signal. So um, you can kind of identify her by that way. She is also our largest giraffe. She weighs in closer to 2,300 pounds, but she has that beautiful blonde face. She actually was born at the San Diego Wild Animal Park and came to us when she was, uh, be I believe, five. Anna wants to know why they're called reticulated. That's another good question. So the reticulated is the spots um, and the pattern on the spots. So if you think of a reticulated python, the reticulated giraffes, they all have very unique patterns where they're close together but that sort of shape so there's another giraffe called the Maasai that have the crazy looking spots where it looks like someone picked up a paintbrush and threw the paint at them and it splattered everywhere all right how do we maintain their hooves so these guys don't need a ton but if you pay attention to our dirt it's actually um, decomposed granite so we call it DG for short and it's got little chunks of granite in it that helps wear down their hooves as they walk um, we do do hoof care on them as needed. So Heshi is starting off her training. So she is now putting her foot on our stepping board and she's only been training for um, doing this particular training for two months now um, and she's doing fabulous. Um, Dobby gets his hooves trimmed and worked on daily just because we can. So we were able to start training with him at about nine months old. So he's further along than Heshi. Capele hasn't really needed a lot of it. She actually um, wears her feet down without our help. So we are training her for it and to get blood just because she is older, we want to work on her. But for the most part, her hooves take care of themselves, which is pretty cool. Abby would like to know what your favorite part of working with giraffes is. Their personality. So Dobby is very much all about being around us, being in our space, um, doing goofy things. Um, they actually got their shots this morning um, that they get every single year. And of course, just like any child, he reacted the funniest where he kind of threw a little bit of a temper tantrum and ran away and bounced and, you know, ran after us thinking that it was funny because, you know, that's what little kids do where everyone else just got the shot and walked away and was fine. <laughs> so, um, as big as they are, they still have just as much personality as your dog at home where, you know, you get to know them very well and learn each individual and what they need and what they don't like and stuff like that. And they have already demolished this piece of enrichment here with how she getting the last bits. Um, Chizzy wants to know how long are their tongues? About 18 inches. So, and that's for the adults. So how she's actually showing, oh, she's about to get it. Um, showing how long they really can be. Let's see if she'll work on it again. Uh, Dobby's is closer to probably about 
10 inches right now because he is still growing. Um, but yeah, let me see. I'll get her that piece because that was kind of hard for her. Hi. <laughs> so we'll see if she'll stick it out really far for us so she can have that big piece. <laughs> So, and then we get a lot of people asking us why they're black and that's so that they get some sun protection. Um, so when they're browsing in Africa and even here when we give them leaves, their tongue would be sticking out for a really long time and without any sun protection, they would get burned. So we believe it's mostly that. So their skin underneath is also black again for sun protection, but a lot of other animals, including the Garena, who are related to them um, also have black tongues so that when they're browsing and sticking their tongue out, it doesn't get sunburned. Amelia and Elijah want to know if they're soft. They're very soft. So their hair is very, very short and very, very fine. They don't get a winter coat like horses do. Um, there's no need for that. So you can see that they're all shedding a little bit because they do shed throughout the year, but um, their hair is very short and very, very soft. So the softest part on them is right behind their ears. Um, probably my favorite part to be able to scratch them and rub on them because they are so soft. They are also very oily. So when you start petting them so much, you actually end up with a ton of oil on your hands. Oh, great question. Uh, Annika, age 12, wants to know how much grain they need. They get about eight to 10 pounds of grain a day. Um, so that is for each individual. And then Capella gets an additional five to eight pounds of that high fat grain a day. Um, so they get quite a bit. Um, alfalfa, they get about 120 pounds a day. And then the brows, um, it all depends on how much we get. We actually just put a giant branch in that maybe I'll try to take a picture and we'll put it in the comments later that they trimmed of a honey locust tree, which is one of their favorites inside. But on a normal every single day, they get uh, about 20 kilograms, so 40 pounds of tree branches every single day with leaves on them. Let's see. All right. Do we rotate through different types of enrichment or do you have to come up with new things constantly? So Tori these guys asked. are pretty easy. Um, browse is by far their favorite enrichment. So Heshi was going to start playing with the metal, but she changed her mind. Um, a lot of stuff for them is keeping that tongue busy. So we try to come up with different um, stuff to keep them busy. But like these were actually manufactured from a company that does specialize in hoof stock and zoo enrichment. So like I said, these are called the bamboozles and we actually had them made to what we want them to, how many holes, how many sides, how big they are, how small they are. Um, there's one door on the side so we can fully clean them out. Um, enrichment wise though, we put up the wind chime a few days ago and they'll play with it for days and days and days. Um, we have different balls. We'll even just do simple things as moving the balls around and they get excited about it the next day, even though it's the same ball they've had. Um, so these guys, we don't need to change it out too often, but we still change it out uh, multiple times during the week. Um, we'll even do it with their enrichment where we'll change where we're putting it, we'll change how we're doing it so that it's just different for them, for them to have to think about it and how to get to it. Hi, Sophia, she's five and she says giraffes are her absolute favorite. Hi, Sophia, that's wonderful. Let's see. Dominic wants to know where you get your ideas for enrichment, the stuff that you've come up with. So some of these we actually take from other zookeepers. So um, thankfully there is now a zookeeper, giraffe zookeeper, and just a zookeeper Facebook page that we put fun ideas that we come up with and so that we can share them with each other. So the bamboozle is one, again, I got off of a website and they already had it, but the Tupperware that Heshi just finished off was off of Facebook, the Facebook group and same with the metal toys. So I, I changed up what the toys were a little bit, but for the most part, a lot of us have some of the fun ideas. Um, so we, we steal from each other a lot, just because once somebody does it and shows how fun their giraffes had, then we all want to do it. So um, the wind chimes was just a fun one. We had some, bum, some bamboo laying around. We have, for other species, we use fire hose, but these guys, it was safer and better to use the bamboo, and they seem to really like hitting it, scratching on it fun stuff like that. So sometimes it's just even what you might think of as junk laying around. So sometimes it's um, one of the deep rock water jugs. We can fill that up, put some holes in it, put it, some water in it and put some produce in it. And that's even fun for them. Oh, speaking of water, Annika again, wants to know how much water they drink every day. That's a good question. And I actually don't know the answer to that. Oh, um, stumped a keeper. <laughs> so 
We um, provide them with all the water they want, so it's kind of hard to see, but Christina can get a little closer. There's a metal um, drinker on the wall, so it's the round one on to the right. That is an automatic drinker, just like the horses, and um, like a horse drinker that you would have at a house. So they get all the water they want. Um, funny enough, sometimes they'll just drink out of the puddles that the rain made. Um, just because that's more fun and dirty. <laughs> um, so they have all the water they want. So I honestly could not tell you how many. So Dikembe, our old male, Dobby's dad, we would actually sometimes collect his urine. He was a really good boy and let us walk up underneath him and collect it. And it was just because we didn't want his stall getting dirty. Um, he would usually urinate right after we clean the stall. So we would go in there and catch it so it wouldn't make a puddle all over the place. And we were able to catch over three liters sometimes. So, oh gosh. And that was, oh no, Dikembe's peeing, so we'd go in there, so we already missed some of it. And then, okay, our arms are tired, that's gonna be enough. So it could be closer to four liters in a male giraffe, a full grown male giraffe. So that actually leads to a question. You talked about going in there with them. They seem super gentle. But can it be dangerous with these guys? What Talk dangerous. about the trust that you have to build. Yep, so we have a lot of um, that personality thing, right? So we have Heshi, who is a big sweetheart, but she has always been kind of a, if you get nervous, if she gets upset, if she gets anything, a front leg will come out and kick at you. So, you know, we used to go out with them quite a bit. When Dobby turned nine months old, he got really rambunctious and really excited to see us, which actually was a very dangerous thing because he came running at us to play with us but that means legs were going everywhere. So we have not been going in with them that much. Um, Papele is a big sweetheart. If we wanted to, we could walk up to her and touch her. Um, that's actually how we were able to ultrasound her when she was pregnant with Dobby. So um, she was not trained for an ultrasound, but she is trained to let us touch her. So we walked in, had food. One of us was touching her belly with the ultrasound machine while one of us fed her and super calm. The whole time though, we are always watching their behavior because it can go from being calm to very nervous, which could be dangerous. So we don't typically go in with them um, unless we have to. All of our training is what we call protected contact, which means they stay on one side of the fence, on one side of a fire hose, so that they can't accidentally get scared and trample us, kick us, anything like that. Just because it wouldn't be a malicious, mean, I don't like you. It would be, I'm scared and I need to get away from you or I need to get away from something else and you're in my way. Um, so yeah, we use extra precautions just to maintain our safety and their safety because we don't want them to be put in a bad position with us either. Hi everyone, we're getting lots of questions asking if we're open, when we plan on reopening. We are working with the city and state to set a date on when we can reopen, but until we, until we get that further clarification, until we know more, we appreciate your patience. Just hold on a little longer, we can't wait to have you back. Alaria, age six, wants to know why they have horns. Yep, so we call them ossicones. So the reason behind that, the why we don't call them a horn or an antler is because they're kind of a combination of both. So an antler is bone and then the animal would shed it every single year. Um, a horn is made out of keratin, just like your fingernails, and they do not shed them. So that's why they look a little bit different. These guys do not shed them, but they are made out of bone. So they're ossified calcium, which is why they are an ossicone. Um, and same with the bump on their front. So that's like the medial crest and then they have one in the back also. Um, so the males would use them for fighting. They do this crazy thing called decking where they would stand next to each other and then hit each other's opposite sides um, for dominance and to take over another herd. So they, again, don't really use them here. Um, you'll see them scratching on things, rubbing on things, but um, they are definitely an adaptation as to how they would fight and take over. Um, the females would also use them to protect their young if they really needed to, but for the most part, these guys have them, and oddly enough, the Opapi do not have them. Get a little closer to you so people can hear more. Yep. Um, we're getting some questions about, are they attracted to certain sounds that aren't common in nature, like bells or horns or keys? So <laughs> we, we brought the symphony here in October, I believe. Um, and that was the first time we've done a lot of like live music. We do a lot of like, we'll do nature sounds for them. Sometimes we just play our music. We've been playing a lot of Disney. Um, you know, we've been doing that because there's nobody around to catch us listening to Disney as adults. <laughs> um, but Dobby really reacted to the high pitched sounds and he reacted in a way that would show us he's really excited. Um, but the low notes we had the, 
I don't remember what instrument, unfortunately. Um, the large instrument come up, and she was doing a bony noise, which is really low, and he was really interested in it, and he just kept watching her do it. Um, and then for his birthday, we had one of our keepers come play a violin, and she played the Harry Potter theme song. And if you guys were here for his birthday celebration, he got really excited and a little nervous with all of the enrichment we gave him and started running around the yard, which is good and bad. And at one point when Sarah started playing the Harry Potter theme song, it calmed him down pretty instantly. And he just stopped and stared at her and watched her, which was pretty cool to get to see. Um, we have played nature songs, they don't, or nature sounds, they don't like thunderstorms very much. They got very on edge when the thunderstorms, but other animal sounds, they didn't seem to mind and just kind of lo looked at whatever device we were playing it on because they weren't understanding really why it was coming out of there. Apparently it was a cello. Oh, that sounds right. Yep. Do they lick the keepers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they drool on us. They lick us. They try to take our keys. They try to take our prox cards, our radios. Um, yeah, they they don't lick us like a dog, but Dobby definitely likes to mess with us and get us. How she likes to drool on us, and Capele just wants us to scratch her. All right, we are doing a last call for questions. The giraffes are just about done with their enrichment, so we can't really bribe them to stay here anymore. <laughs> um, couple of questions: Have they had any animal visitors during the zoo that they hadn't seen before? Zoo closure that they hadn't seen before? So they've had some accidental ones where the animal ambassadors were bringing an animal to a different location and they walked by, but none that were actually visitor visitors. So we do have Aspen, our wonderful ambassador puppy dog, and she walks every single morning and multiple times throughout the day. And those geese that everybody loved um, got a little frisky and it's nesting time and they don't really like when Aspen walks by. Um, we don't really have the service dogs walk into the building because it makes Capele especially really really nervous having a carnivore in the building But Aspen was getting attacked by the geese So we went ahead and watched Capele and let Aspen come through and it was really the first time that they've seen a carnivore in the building and She was really calm and they were very interested as to why she was in there. So Aspen was definitely been there their go-to, um, but none of the other guys have come to visit. A lot of the ones that you've seen. Oh, they've got a visitor coming, right yeah, now. We have a wild visitor. We have a little. We have a little bunny rabbit coming to visit right in the middle of their exhibit. <laughs> so otherwise, everything like the flamingos have gone on their walks, but that's pretty far away for the flamingos. So um, they have not come up to visit the giraffes. Let's see. Um, we have a question about why. Why is running a concern? So it was a really muddy day that day. Um, that's the only reason it was a concern. We don't want them falling. And he was running because he was scared, um, not because he was having fun. I think Capella is um, looking at the rabbit. <laughs> these two um, get running a lot, which is fine on a normal basis. But when he was running in the mud, he has a tendency to like to slip and we don't want slipping because um, that could cause damage. So if it's a normal day, normal, even out here right now, there's some muddy spots, but mostly it's dry it's perfectly fine and we love seeing them run. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow at one and we hope to see you in person. You've hopefully very soon, hopefully very soon <laughs> as well. We miss everybody. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you for coming.